Have you ever done something that you thought was original, only to find out later that people have been doing it for years? That's kind of how I stumbled across this GPU mod that only costs pennies and works far better than I thought it would. Stay tuned. So a few weeks ago, I showed you how to repaste a GPU. During the testing for that video, I wondered what would happen if you increase the spring pressure on the mount on the back of the GPU heatsink. It turns out it cools a lot better. And all you need to do is use these tiny stupid little fiber washers that used to come with hardware packs that were included with PC cases. So today I'm gonna show you how to do it and we're gonna test to see how much better it works. But first, I gotta pay some bills, so check out today's sponsor. Are you still running Windows 11 unactivated because the license just costs too much? Then you should check out today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, where you can get a valid Windows 11 license for around $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark and actually be able to change your desktop background with a valid license for Windows 11. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 11 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 11 and click the link that says change product key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark. And check out the description for deals on not just Windows, but Office too. Now, on with the video. So if you watched the video a few weeks ago about repasting an RTX 3070, I mentioned in the closing of that video that the first time I replaced the thermal paste, on my temps actually went up. It wasn't until tearing the card back down and trying a different paste method that I got the temperatures to considerably improve from the stock thermal paste. And after I was done with all of my temperature testing, I wanted to test a theory that I thought I had came up with while I repeatedly disassembled that 37. What if I put washers under the screws that secure the PCB to the heatsink? The screws are kind of spring-loaded with little springs on them, and by using washers, it should increase the spring pressure, causing the heatsink to push down harder on the GPU die. Now, to do this, you don't want to use metal washers for obvious reasons. They conduct electricity, and you definitely don't want to short out your PCB. And that's when I thought of these right here. If you've been building computers for a while, then you probably recognize these little red fiber washers. These used to come with the hardware packs that came with cases, and their purpose was to go between the motherboard and screw when installing motherboards into a case. Now, the problem is that these washers were always a bad idea because on motherboards, the screw holes are grounding points. So you definitely don't want to insulate a grounding point. Also, kind of ironically, if you did end up using these fiber washers on your motherboard screws, then the grounding points would just ground to the brass standoffs anyway. So either way, if you knew what you were doing, you never used these little fiber washers. And because of that, I have quite the collection of them. But here's the thing, since they're made out of a fiber material, they would work perfectly for my idea of increasing the spring pressure on a GPU. So. That's what I did. And the results were a lot more dramatic than I thought they would be. So there's only a few things that you're gonna need to do this. First off is gonna be these fiber washers. And I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description on where you can buy some. Unfortunately, the only places that I could find these for sale were in bulk. So you're gonna have to buy a few of them. But if it works out for you, then you'll have lots of extras. But also, you're gonna need a toolkit. I'm gonna use my iFixit toolkit here. Not sponsored, but still an awesome toolkit and you're gonna need a Phillips precision screwdriver in order to unscrew the bottom screws on the GPU. Now, let's get to it. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is remove these screws from the bottom right here and put in place these fiber washers right here. So I put them in this Ziploc bag only so I could keep track of them, but I'm gonna go ahead and pour them out here real quick. And the way that I like to do this is just take one off at a time so that way you're retaining spring pressure on your GPU itself. And it's also a really good idea to probably repaste the GPU before you do this, because with the dry thermal paste, you might have an issue. But once you put the washer in place, go ahead and take the screw and just replace the screw into the hole, making sure that the washer is right underneath it, just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and repeat this three more times. And the way I'm doing it is through a crosshatch pattern. 
because I'm trying to not disturb the thermal paste on it. And hopefully that will work. So we're going to go ahead and set that in place right here. And we're going to screw this down and we're going to do this two more times. And this doesn't require you to take the entire heat sink off of the GPU because we're only going to be applying this to the mount behind it. So you can keep this together. However, like I said, it is a really good idea to repaste your GPU prior to doing this. So in that case, you're going to have to take it apart anyway. So now that we have the washers installed, it's time to go over the numbers. The temperatures were tested in 3D Mark using the Solar Bay stress test. This is actually a mobile GPU test, but this is also a 1660. And the stress test was able to keep the GPU at 100% the entire time. Also, I fixed the fan on this thing at 75%, so the fan shouldn't affect our temperatures between the two tests. And like I said, the GPU was repasted prior to doing any temperature testing. The same mount was used with the same thermal paste in both tests. The only difference is applying the fiber washers behind the spring mount. So let's see how it did. So I just have to say before we get into these results that these genuinely blew my mind. Let me show you why. Our average temperature before applying the washers was 75.5 Celsius. Once applying the fiber washers, we got an average temperature of 69.6. That's a decrease of 5.9 Celsius in our average temperatures. Now our max temperature before applying the washers was 83.2 and our max temperature after applying the washers was 75.4. That's a 7.8 Celsius drop in our max temperature. This is pretty good, but it gets much better. Our average hotspot temperature was 88.3 before applying the fiber washers. And after installing them, we got an average hotspot of 81.3. That's a seven Celsius drop in our average hotspot temperature. Now our max hotspot temperature was 96 Celsius before applying the fiber washers. And after applying them, we got a max hotspot of 87.2. That's an 8.8 .8 Celsius drop in our max hotspot temperature. All of these numbers look really good, but what did they do for our performance? Unfortunately, not as much as I'd hoped. Our average core clocks before applying the fiber washers was 1845, and our average core clock after applying the washers was 1854. This is an increase in our average core clock of about nine megahertz, or about a single boost bin. Our max core clock was 1980 with and without the washers. So it looks like the washers were able to keep the GPU at one higher boost bin for the majority of the run, which I guess is pretty good considering the fact that these washers cost practically nothing. So our temperature gains were really good for a mod that literally costs pennies and it's free if you already had the washers. This is definitely worth doing. Not only did they help lower the average temperature, but they helped even more by lowering our hotspot temperature. And I think the reason for this is because more pressure on the GPU die probably spreads the paste out a little bit better. At least that's my theory. Unfortunately though, those temperature gains really didn't translate to much performance gains. However, they did keep the GPU at one higher boost bin, which ultimately would give you a slightly more stable gaming experience. Whether you would notice it in gameplay is kind of debatable. Obviously though, this testing was done on a 1660, which is already a relatively cool running card. So you might see better results on a higher end GPU. If you want to do this mod yourself, I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description below where you can pick up a pack of the fiber washers. Like I said before, I couldn't find them in small quantities, so I think you have to buy like a thousand of them, but it's only like seven bucks. But if, and this is also if you don't have any of your own, of course. Most people that have been working on computers for a while probably have a few of these things laying around. But if for whatever reason the link that I provided isn't working, or if you have some fiber washers already that you want to try, the ones that I used were eight millimeter OD with a 3.5 millimeter ID and were about half a millimeter thick. I don't recommend using anything thicker than half a millimeter. I did read some form posts where people were going as thick as one millimeter, but that seems kind of risky to me. I think the potential for cracking your GPU increases exponentially over about a half a millimeter. 
But if you really want to go thicker than half a millimeter, then they do make these fiber washers in 0.8 millimeters. I think that would be much safer than one millimeter. Also, you don't want to stack these washers. Only use one washer per screw. By stacking them, you can create an inconsistent pressure and potentially increase the risk of cracking your GPU die. But either way, I'm not responsible if you mess up your GPU. So try whatever you want and let me know in the comments below how it worked out for you. Also, I would highly recommend that if you're gonna do this, then I would repaste your GPU first for the best results. And if you'd like to do that, it just so happens that I recently did a video on just how to do that. And I'll go ahead and link that video right here. If you try this, then definitely make sure to let me know in the comments below what your results were. And always, you guys have a great day.